And joining us now for more perspective on today's testimony is South Carolina attorney Mandy Power Norrell. Mandy, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, as we thank all know you. at this point, Alex spent hours on the stand today. Most of today, he was being questioned by the defense, by his team, so to speak. Although the latter part of the day, he of course was questioned by the prosecutor. Are you surprised his team spent so much time questioning him? No, I thought they would take a lot longer. I thought they'd take a day or two to uh, to question him. There were a lot of lies he's told. There's a lot of damning evidence that he has to explain away. I thought he would give a narrative that gives us a better picture of what he says happened, but uh, they took a lot shorter time than I expected them to. Okay, well then let me follow up with uh, prosecutors. You know, prosecutors, obviously the recess today, court will resume tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. How long do you think uh, the prosecution will cross-examine? Well, at the end of today, when they were handing, uh, taking care of uh, matters outside the presence of the jury, Creighton Waters said he could take about three or four more hours. I'll, um, I'll be surprised if he doesn't take more than three or four hours because Alec is responding with, uh, with some pretty roundabout answers and Creighton is trying to get him uh, pinned down on some answers. So I expect as the questions get harder, that kind of evasive uh, response is going to pick up. And I, I would say it would take more time than, um, than Mr. Waters anticipates. All right, so, so maybe Murda admitted to lying today and that was while he was being questioned by the defense. Let's listen to some of that. Yeah. On June the 7th. I wasn't thinking clearly. I don't think I was capable of reason. And I lied about being down there. And I'm so sorry that I did. All right, so the words came out of his mouth. I lied about being down there. Did the defense, they had to have known he would admit, admit to lying, right? So what was the strategy by having him That's admit to reason. this? for being there. He he could not admit to that. And Dick Harpitlian in his opening pretty much said that he um, he misstated about you know his whereabouts on that day. It was obvious that he was down there. That's what I call the big lie. And he had to get on the stand to um, to explain the big lie away. The problem is he's told so many additional lies that I'm not sure he dealt with all of those in his um, in his direct questioning. He uh, he dealt with the big lie by saying he was paranoid because he was on opioids and um, and afraid of law enforcement. But then in cross, we see he's been in law enforcement his entire life. His family's been involved in law enforcement for generations. He's not afraid of law enforcement. I don't think that's going to um, to resonate with the jury. He didn't have a very good explanation for why he lied. Well, and that's what I wanted in to ask you opinion. next, Mandy, because, you know, when I asked what was the, the strategy right there, I mean, you immediately said, well, he, they, they had to because he, right. he had to somehow explain it. Do you think uh, today's questioning by the defense helped him to properly explain the lies uh, that, he, that he's told? I don't, you know, as I was listening to it, it did not ring true to me, but I, I don't know. That may just be the way I hear it. It's... Um, it, he did not, um, he didn't sound like he was being as forthcoming as I would expect him to be. He had rehearsed being forthcoming about coming clean on the lie about being at the kennels right before they died. But the rest of the uh, testimony seemed um, a little bit of hemming and hawing, a little bit of, well, yeah, of course, you know, you understand, I'm sure you know, you know, that kind of thing that he did not address some of the, um, the big things like why, why was he so clean when law enforcement arrived? He never right. told about when he washed his hands. Why was he, why was he able to call 911 and uh, within 17 seconds of arriving at the scene and then tell the 911 operator all of the many things that he had done in assessing their bodies that 17 seconds would not be enough time to do that and Mandy, call 911. They're wrapping me. Away. They're wrapping me, Mandy. But before I yes, let you go, indeed. I want to ask you: Do you think he helped or hurt his case? I think he couldn't have heard it. It was it was in it was spiraling. So I think, you know, I think he did. He's done some good. All right. Mandy Power Norrell, thank you so much. We appreciate it.
Thank All you. Right. We thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.